welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Jenna Rose Giacomo. And I'm Sean Ostrowski. Here's your news now. The cost of taking summer courses at Cabrini has dropped almost 50% to $250 per credit for up to six summer undergraduate credits. Be sure to check out the course schedule at www.cabrini.edu backslash summer. I'm sure you've seen signs hanging all around campus. It's that time again to gain Insta Cash or to return books and order your fall ones. If you don't want to hang on to your textbooks from this semester, you can get bucks for your books as advertised by the Cabrini College Bookstore. You can either visit the College Bookstore in person or online at buyback.com. We all know about selfies, that quick picture taken while waiting for a cup of coffee. In recent news, selfies are being banned at more serious events. According to Radnor Patch, President Obama declined a selfie with a 13-year-old girl in South Korea after several recent controversies involving presidential selfies. And the White House isn't the only one. According to CBS, the University of South Florida stated that if a graduate takes a selfie on stage with the college president at graduation, their degrees could be withheld. Are selfies really that bad? Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. And that was your trip around the block. So Nick, what's going on in sports this week? Well, Jenna Rose, a coach resigned, an NBA owner got banned for life, and I have some CSAC accolades. So let me tell you all about it. Our top story is Marcus Kahn, six-year head coach of our Cabrini men's basketball team, has stepped down and accepted another head coaching position at the University of Mary Washington. Kahn had an overall record of 153 and 27, including a 96 and 10 CSAC conference record. He was also named CSAC Coach of the Year all six seasons and led the Cavs to five straight conference titles and the NCAA Final. A national search for a new coach has begun. We had the chance to sit down with Coach Khan himself to discuss his departure and a new journey. Let's take a look. He's a great basketball mind. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how to teach the game. He's a Division I talent coach. Um, and Mary Washington got a steal. Something I love talking about is my time here at Cabrini and the success that our team has had. And, you know, listen, I mean, ultimately it is a reflection on the players that we've had in the program. Everybody stands out to me for their own special reason, from the Chris Blakes that were here to the Kevin Mithavicious to Dom Farello, Lamar Fisher. You know, I, those guys are, I couldn't separate them from the current team that we have now. Um, you know, from Aaron, Corey Lyman, Corey Frazier, Fran Rafferty. I mean, everybody's got their special place with me. I mean, he's just an overall good guy, great coach, and he, he's, he's got a lot going for him, John, moving forward. He's a winner. He's a winner. He's won a lot. His record speaks for itself. Yeah, there's 15 guys that come out to play each year, um, but you're talking about like leading those guys in the battle and things like that. I was Coach Khan for the past six years, Cabrini. You know, making the runs that we have in the NCAA tournament, that is a complete credit to the work that they've, they've put in, the assistant coaches and the time that I've asked of them to, to spend on our team and the managers that we have in place and top to bottom. I think it's just a, it's a, um, a sign of the commitment that was made to our program. Well, we built up over the last six years here uh, to take the team, you know, from, you know, from the bottom uh, all the way up to the top here. Uh, you know, and so it's sad to see him go because I think we probably had maybe some more good years and there's maybe another national championship run. But it's also good because he put he's put in a lot of hours, um, a lot of time, uh, and, I, and it's good to see him rewarded for his hard work. I'm going to remember the people the most for sure. Um, the other coaches that I've worked with, the, the time spent with them, obviously in the athletic department. Going back to, to when Joe Junto was here, the athletic director that hired me, like he's going to be one of my lifelong friends, Brian Beecham, Steve Colford, Jackie Neary, Keith Pearson. I mean, they're going to be lifelong friends for me. And those are going to be the people and, and the things I remember the most here. You know, my favorite moment, making the run to the Final Four, obviously, was, uh, was awesome. Winning that game down there in the semifinals was probably uh, the, the highest moment of, of, of my career here at Cabrini. I'm walking back into the locker room and uh, kind of calls me from down the hall. He turns around, and I turn around, I stop, I walk up to him, and he's like, I mean, do you think you were going to be here two years out of high school? We made it to the Elite Eight. Um, that entire run was just really special. I think one of the biggest memories uh, for me um, with Coach Kahn is that, you know, when he came here, I, I, I wasn't going to uh, help out, I wasn't going to coach. 
And the first thing that he said to me was that, trust me, we're going to win and we're going to uh, make a run at this thing. And, you know, and he made right on his promise. We did some special things here. It's the, definitely the next step in my career. I, I have nothing but good things to say about Cabrini. I think, uh, listen, I think everybody gets to the point in your career where it's time to make that move and um, different factors play a part in, in, in it and in, in the decision, certainly not an easy one for me to make, uh, but at the end of the day, I believe it was the right one. I, I see it being great here for years to come, the recruits that we have here, the ones coming in, everything that's in place. I'm very comfortable with, with where, we're leaving, where I'm leaving the program. Um, I've no, I no doubt that a, that a good coach will come in here and maybe do better. And so I, I'm, I, the future is bright for Cabrini. I've always thought that and will continue to. made his presence felt here. His absence is going to be felt even more. Cabrini, you know, will lose a guy that, you know, definitely cared about the school, um, the program, the players, the students, the faculty, the staff here on campus. And Mary Washington is going to a great, gain a great man. We have reached the end of the regular season for all of our spring sports and multiple players have received top CSAC honors. Women's lacrosse swept CSAC honors for the second year in a row. Melissa Scanzano won Player of the Year, Sasha Wozniak Rookie of the Year, and Head Coach Jackie Neary won Coach of the Year. Men's lacrosse took two top honors. Corey Elmer won his second straight CSAC Player of the Year award, and Head Coach Steve Colfer received his ninth Coach of the Year award. Seven other players received all CSAC first team accolades. After ending their season on a 10-game win streak, Carini women's softball is now in the CSAC championship game. Caitlin Cooper and Amber Dietrich have been named to the all-CSAC first team. In NBA news, Clippers owner Donald Sterling has been banned from the NBA for life and fined two and a half million dollars. It has been found that he has made racist remarks that was recorded by an ex-girlfriend on tape recording. Sterling has been pushed to sell a team, but has said to Fox News that he has no interest in selling the team. And now we'll do it for sports. Tune in next week for National, Philly, and as always, your Cabrini Sports News. The White House told the New York Times earlier this week that it is going to set stronger guidelines for universities and colleges to deal with sexual assault cases on campuses. The guidelines urge colleges to conduct anonymous surveys about sexual assault cases and to have anti-assault officers on campus. Vice President Biden said that colleges and universities have to stop pretending that sexual assaults don't exist on campus. He said that colleges also need to give victims support, a confidential place to go, and they should be sure that perpetrators are brought to justice. CNN reported this week that Professor Daniel Nacera at Harvard University put an experiment together for using silicone to separate water into hydrogen and oxygen. Nacera's mission is to bring renewable energy to developing countries. With this energy research, it may be possible to use any tub of water, some cheap materials, and a light source from the sun to produce two incredibly powerful fuels. Summer is almost here. Cabrini students and faculty talked about their summer plans with us. I know I'm feeling some summer fun. Summer 2014 is upon us. Let's check out what Cabrini students are doing over the summer. Summer 2014. I'm all ready for summer 2014. Summer 2014! Summer 2014. Summer 2014. Summer 2014. Around <laughs> 2014. For this summer, I'm going to be traveling abroad to Ireland with Cabrini for six weeks. So it's going to be a lovely trip. Uh, this summer, I plan on going to Las Vegas, uh, taking a couple of days for fun out there with some friends, going to Eagles training camp and also attending the Jay-Z and Beyonce concert. Um, during the summer, I'm actually going to be taking courses at Cabrini to catch up with my credits and hopefully graduate sooner than uh, expected. Uh, this summer, I will be working at the post office with my mom. She's the manager of the post office. And I will be uh, taking a class, summer class. I'm going to be working all summer. Uh, I'll be working, saving up for a new car, and then in August I'll be here for RA training. My plan for summer 2014 is to go to Miami to celebrate my family reunion as well as go to Puerto Rico with some friends to just have a great summer and end it with a bang. I'm trying to work at the airport, U.S. Airways, because you get to travel for free and you get to bring up to 10 people with you a year and one person gets to travel for free with you like all year long. 
and I'm just gonna hang out with my friends and family and relax. I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Jenna Rose DiGiacomo. On, On location, location for location. location. And that was your trip across the nation. So Val, what highlights do we have in entertainment this week? I have news for you about Gwen Stefani, George Clooney, and Grease. The hand jive? You know it. <laughs> so let me tell you more about it. <laughs> Get ready to start practicing your hand jives, everyone. Fox president Kevin Riley announced on Monday that the network is set to air a three-hour broadcast of the 1978 hit film Grease, starring John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Grease Live is set to air on Fox in 2015. The broadcast will reintroduce viewers to the film's iconic songs such as Grease Lightning and Summer Nights. Who do you think should play the roles of Danny and Sandy? We also can't forget about the T-Bird and Pink Lady characters. Tweet us your thoughts at Location News. NBC's hit show, The Voice, is welcoming a new coach for Season 7. Gwen Stefani has officially announced via Instagram that she will be joining The Voice family. Gwen Stefani will be filling in for singer Christina Aguilera, who is pregnant with her second child. Aguilera will return to The Voice for Season 8. Looks like George Clooney is calling it quits with Bachelorhood. The 52-year-old actor popped the question to human rights lawyer Amal Alamuddin over the weekend after barely seven months of dating. Although the couple has not announced their engagement, Alamuddin's law firm sure has by a congratulatory statement on Monday. This will be Clooney's second trip down the aisle, who was married to Talia Balsam from 1989 to 1993. Let's check in with Lauren and Rocco as they take a tour of some of the shore points in New Jersey. Looking for something to do after finals week? Why not head to the shore? Let's check in with Lauren and Rocco, see where they're at. Here we are kicking off the tour of the shore at the southest point of New Jersey. Right off exit zero, we're in Cape May. Let's see what brings everybody out today. When we're here, we, we talk about, let's buy a bed and breakfast, let's move to the shore all the time. So it's, it's the type of place where you, you could just, just being here is relaxing. You don't really need activities. So if it, you're just wandering around the beach or if you're just walking up and down the mall, it's an enjoyable thing. One of our favorite places is Congress Hall and uh, the atmosphere is really enjoyable for us and any time of the year, that's, that's the hub. Then at night they have the boiler room, which is like a club. At, you want to go at night, uh, but we, we love the food, love the service. Uh, it's probably the premier place in town. Welcome to I'm James, this is Gigi, we work at Mr. Softies, uh, we're here for the summer, I don't know, I'm here to work, her dad owns the store. I like to go to the beach, uh, hang out on the boardwalk, there's like plenty of things to do up here, go to go-karts, ride the go-karts, there's plenty of food to eat, all kinds of fried stuff, fun, fun, fun. We're ending our tour in Ocean City, New Jersey. Taking a stroll on its beaches. Location for location. Now back to the news desk. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with Jenna Rose for your news around the world. Thank you, Val. Well, history was made this past Sunday when Pope Francis elevated former pontiffs John the 23rd and John Paul II to sainthood. According to the New York Times, St. Peter's Square in Rome was filled with crowds, including more than 5,000 priests and 1,000 bishops. Never before had two popes been canonized at the same time, but according to Pope Francis, these are two men that share a place in history. Syria has once again missed the deadline of destroying its chemical weapons. 
The deadline was this past Sunday, but according to international experts overseeing the process, it could only be days away until the destruction is complete. Syria has made steps to destroying its arsenal, and according to a report by the Associated Press, it will be done by the end of the month. If destruction is completed, then this will show Syria is committed to getting rid of its chemical weapon program. For Location Weekly News, I'm Jenna Rose DiGiacomo. And I'm Nicholas Sibla. I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Sean Ostrowski. Check out our last episode on our social media platforms by simply searching Location News. Have, Have a, a great, great summer, summer Cabrini. Cabrini. This is Location News, signing off.